to scan the pyramid's big void. What is it? New evidence. Announced November 2nd, 2017, the big void discovery has been heralded by some Egyptologists as the discovery of the century, while others have said they found nothing. This offers nothing to Egyptology, zero. Well, isn't nothing the point? A void, an empty space, exactly what makes this something and something big. Its minimum length, minimum length is 30 metres, 100 feet, and it is approximately 2 metres, 6.5 feet wide, similar to the width of the Grand Gallery, which is actually about 48 metres in length, approximately 157 feet in length. Aside from three matching results from three separate teams, from the muon tomography carried out, x-raying if you like, using cosmic rays, and very positive reactions from the physics community, there is another piece of evidence I am presenting that indicates there is definitely something there which lies in the path of the King's Northern Shaft, uh, the King's, King's Chamber Northern Shaft, or the KCN, and the path of the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft, the QCN. And it also indicates uh, the shape of it, which is inclined. The shafts I am referring to are the 8 by 8 inch approximately openings which lie symmetrically opposed in the north and south walls of both the King's and Queen's chambers. The King's chamber shafts extend to the pyramid's exterior, while the Queen's chamber shafts end in the famous doors that were discovered between 1993 and 2002. Each approximately 63 metres up the passage, which run at between about 30 degrees and 43 degrees upwards. The southern shafts run fairly straight. However, the northern shafts have fairly significant bends in them. The reason for this has been cited as to avoid the Grand Gallery which makes perfect sense if they, were if they were in interference with the Grand Gallery. However, both shafts, as can be seen from this very accurate CAD image of the passages, don't really go anywhere near the Grand Gallery. So my question is, if they aren't swerving to such extremes to avoid the Grand Gallery, what are they swerving to avoid? Let's have a look at these northern shafts each in a little more detail, beginning with the northern lower shaft from the Queen's Chamber, or the QCN, as it is also known. Until Gantenbrink's robotic explorations, it was commonly thought that the Queen's Chamber shafts were only a few metres long, really just ornamental, despite long hexagonal rods discovered up there, and accounts from Wayman Dixon in 1872 about probing them with these devices. Um, one of which was found some 27 metres up the QCN by the Pyramid Rover 2002. Now to begin with, the position of the QCN's beginning does not place it in the way of the Grand Gallery to begin with. There is about 2 metres space between the two spaces. Let's just say, when the QCN approached the level of the Grand Gallery, which does coincide with it making an abrupt 45 degree turn about 18 metres up the shaft, let's just say the huge blocks supporting the Grand Gallery necessitated this detour. This is somewhat feasible explanation for this sharp turn. And this is as far as Upwart 2 could get up this shaft, but did manage a photo around this bend. But in 2002, the Pyramid Rover of iRobot explored past here and discovered another three bends before reaching the north copper-handled door. The twin of Gantenbrink's door, if you like. In originally, I thought only the distance up the shaft of these bends were given by the Pyramid Rover team, whose exploration of this shaft was largely carried out off the record. But Zawi Hawass's book magic of the pyramids actually gives the bends and the directions as well 
as the angles uh, to one degree or another. <laughs> no pun intended. So we have the first bend at 19 metres and 45 degrees west, as documented by Rudolf Gantenbrink in 1993 and appearing in this CAD map that he generated. However, after that, we only have the information from iRobot and Zawi Hawass. Then at 23 metres, there's a, a bend to the right at approximately 20 degrees. Then at 25 metres, another bend to the right, um, 20 degrees. And then at 29 metres, this is one has been blocked by a Dixon hexagonal rod. But in any event, in the Zawi Hawass book, it states that the 29 metre bend veers slightly to the left. And so I've tried to represent that in the extrapolation I've made on Rudolf Gantenbrink's CAD map here in yellow. It may veer off more to the west, or it may veer off uh, not quite so much to the west. It's hard to say. There must be footage of this out there somewhere, because uh, the Pyramid Rover had all sorts of camera gear uh, strapped to it, <laughs> and um, all sorts of devices, in fact. It had uh, things to measure thicknesses and so why this hasn't been available anybody is anybody's guess um, assuming Zahi Hawass's angles distances and directions are correct this is the path the Queen's chamber north shaft takes which is a little odd compared to the other shafts which straighten out more but one thing is certain if the bends were made just to avoid the grand gallery and by a margin of what at least about five meters why didn't they return to the original path and instead actually move further away from straighter south to north trajectory the queen's chamber southern shaft and its ganton brink door that was drilled and hieroglyphs found which i have all, I only recently translated please see my other videos get all the attention so much work has been put into the southern shaft, but given the position of the northern shaft in relation to the discovery of the big void, it may in fact be far more important and enlightening. Some side views show the Queen's ch chamber north actually intersects with the lower portion of the big void. Could a drill and telescopic camera reveal its contents? The journey up the Queen's chamber south uh, shaft was televised by National Geographic and reported worldwide. The Queen's Chamber North, however, well, here are the two pictures available of it from the same mission. Pretty scant. The only information on the Pyramid Rover exploration of the QCN comes from Zari Hawass's, the former Minister of Antiquities in Egypt, book entitled The Magic of the Pyramids, published 2015. Another interesting side note to the QCN exploration is the mysterious object photographed by Rudolf Gantenbrink in 1993 when his exploration was halted by the first bend, but he was able to photograph ahead. The object is impossible to identify as it was some way up the shaft, but appeared to me to almost look humanoid as if it were a part of a statue, a bust perhaps. According to Hawass, however, as we can read here, it was just a piece of paper and an old ticket to the Giza complex. Okay, the KCN is very well documented. That's the King's Chamber, uh, Northern Shaft. It actually had uh, air conditioning ducts installed in it by Rudolf Gantenbrink. Uh, but as can be seen, it also detours very considerably and continues on that path well beyond avoiding the Grand Gallery. It's impossible to say what the big void is exactly. Beyond that is that it is at least 30 metres long, approximately 2 metres wide, is situated above the Grand Gallery. Um, whether it is one void or a series, however... Whether it is horizontal or inclined, 
uh, assuming no other reasons, if horizontal, the path of the QCN would miss it and therefore wouldn't need to veer off to the west as much. But if inclined, well, that would explain the big detour in the angle taken by the shaft. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it's been one of my longest ones. I put a lot of research into it because the information was quite hard to get, uh, especially the angles and directions of the uh, the QN, the QCN. <laughs> um, and yeah, but I think, um, and it's also very hard to get into the CAD drawings. In fact, I couldn't get into Rudolf Gantenbrink's CAD drawings anymore. Um, the link to the CAD files on his website, keops.com, uh, the Upuaut project are no longer available. I remember looking at them years ago, and they were available through the CAD viewer, uh, and thinking, why do they veer like that? And this was prior to 2017 when the big void was discovered. And I was thinking, uh, there's got to be something there. Otherwise, why would they veer in that way? And uh, it turned out I could very well be uh, correct because um, they did discover the big void there and it just makes sense. Uh, when are they going to actually send a probe in or, you know, probably when... when <laughs> A famous Egyptian official can get the book rights <laughs> to it, perhaps. Um, maybe the movie rights. Um, you know, but as far as I'm concerned, if that's what it takes, if Zawi Hawass wants ownership of every discovery in Egypt, um, whether it's made by him or not, so be it, because I, people just want to know. <laughs> um, you know, I don't like to uh, disrespect Mr. Hawass. But, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but it just seems like everything is so difficult to uh, to work on there. And just, there's so much information that, that could be so easily gathered. And it's just uh, not, it's very frustrating um, <laughs> to people like uh, me and other Egyptological enthusiasts out there. So, you know, what can we do? We could just continue to... Uh, make videos like this and independently research things and communicate and uh, be aware of what's going on and um, at least then there's some drive for progress to be made. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's one of the longest ones I've done, as I said before, and it's a bit kind of a uh, hurry, scurry, hectic, uh, ratty tatty around the edges, but I think I've got the um, main message across. Okay. Hope you enjoy it and feel free to subscribe um, and um, comment, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it's all for the cause of uh, furthering our understanding of uh, these mysteries of the ancient world, which is so very fascinating. And um, as Graham Hancock always says, they uh, the past sort of determines who we are in the future. So it's like we've lost our own identity to a degree because of these um the, these important pieces of information are just uh you know they're sort of tantalizingly close but we can't quite grasp them okay thanks for watching bye